<laughs> Hi everyone and welcome to Pro Tools Answers where three Pro Tools experts of unquestionable moral fibre demonstrate and elaborate on your Pro Tools questions put to the community in Avid's official Facebook support forum. Am I right? Nope. Two and a half. Okay. Two and a half. If we're going by moral fibre, definitely two and a half. Well, I was... I, okay. Uh, please welcome Anders Motz. Hello. And uh, Andy Hagerman. How you doing? And myself, Dave, we take you on a deep journey into the workings of Pro Tools technique and ethos to help the user community get the best out of Pro Tools. I did that today way better than the last one. Don't you agree? Yeah, you did. That was yeah. perfect, Dave. That, <laughs> that was really good. Um, okay, so in this week's episode, we're going to take a brief look, and it will be brief, at Pro Tools 2022.10 um, and the reason for this release in the first place, because um, this came hot on the heels, hot, hot on the heels of 2022.9 right why uh primarily um it was to to take care of some bugs with uh that that existed with with nine being a fairly substantial release this is not uncommon um sometimes um you'll you'll find that that releases are are, are done in the same month which would make it a 22.9.1 or 0.2 or whatever um this one just happened to to fall into the next one. So I would say that this is uh, what we, what we tend to call internally a maintenance release. Um, and there's, so there's no real new features like, like the, uh, you know, like the ARA or anything like that. There's um, one of the most significant um, changes in there is uh, the, uh, I believe that the VCA metering bug, uh, which is just a graphic bug. Um, I believe from my yeah. testing, and I think mm -hmm. Anders, you said as well, mm -hmm. yeah. um, that that's gone away, which is which is good news and welcome news. It wasn't the wasn't the end of the world to begin with, but yeah, it's nice most, that it's gone. And most bug fixes were actually ARA mm -hmm. um, things. Yeah. So mm -hmm. obviously, after releasing that, people discover that there is something that's not working, and uh, they fix it really quickly. So, but yeah. that's cool. Now there is, but that's not there what is I'm one talking other about. thing. Come on, I know what you're talking about. So. Mm -hmm. um, there's been in the in the so so I'm going to pull aside the, the the curtains inside the ACI the Avid Certified Instructor Community. There's kind of long been a kind of a background curiosity about a certain behavior in Pro Tools, um, and and that's and I've I've it's recently kind of been noticed by other people outside of uh, of of the ACI community as well regarding how levels are managed within a specific track. Um, that's what you're talking about, isn't it, Dave? Yes. Okay. So yes, I am. there's a behavior, and it's not a bug, um, and it's not a feature. It's just an aspect of Pro Tools that was 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 well, designed intentionally. Well, um, then it's a feature, right? It was a feature, but I don't know if you could. I, it, uh, to me, a feature is a tool that you can use or not use. This is mm. this is a, a a fundamental part of the, of the okay. mixing yeah, 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 design, okay. right? Yeah. Um, but we've added a feature now that you can disable the the default behavior if you want to and mm. and the best it's not something that most professionals will ever encounter or teachers never. encounter oh, oh yeah it, it's it's really rare that people will notice that some people outside of the aci community have but acis will because when we're teaching certain topics we we tend to do things that a reasonable sane <laughs> professional would never ever do <laughs> um i've actually created a small video on it yeah. Would you like to see roll of VT? Course, yeah. Roll, roll tape. All right, let me. Let me. Yeah, un tape. under cer certain conditions, when you're teaching a class, you are really maximizing what the system can do and ex exploring and explaining stuff. So that's how you can discover this. Uh, under usual cir circumstances, you would never ever get to to hear about this. Right, right. But it's 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 worth noticing. And and and, yep. and by the way, you know, you want to get into the geek. Pro Tools answers. We'll, you come we'll, we'll to the right place. So much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you come to the right place. So, so here is a mix window, and what we have are is a signal generator, followed by four trim plugins, mm -hmm. and then we've got a couple of spaces, and we have one more trim plugin. Now, um, the Pro Tools is a sixty-four bit mix engine. Floating point, um, by the way. Floating point. That's right. Yep. So, sixty-four bit floating point mix engine. So, all the tracks dump into to there, which gives you just a ridiculously large amount of headroom. It's, it's essentially unlimited. 
Yeah, no, it's, it's essentially it's unlimited. Essentially it's not unlimited. Tech, right. It, it, it's not something you're likely to hit the ceiling on, right? Um, in an individual track, the signal path is 32-bit floating point. Okay, so you, each track, 32-bit floating point. The, the mix engine, 64-bit floating point. So far, so good? Yep, both, both essentially now, unlimited. <laughs> Yes, but but thirty two bit floating point is is less essentially unlimited. Well, right? it's it's a, um, it's about fifteen hundred decibels of theoretical dynamic right. ranges, mm-hmm. and 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 well, uh, theoretical headroom. Let's let's say that. Um, and so what we have, what we should be able to do, is what I'm going to do right here. So I've got my signal generator. And I'm going to unmute, and you can hear a perfect sine wave. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to then go to each one of my uh, my my trims. So so there we go, up 6 dB, up another 6 dB that's 12, up another 6 dB that's 18, up another 6 dB that's 24 dB of boost on top of a signal that was already at minus zero. So I should be able to bring it down by exactly 24 dB, and it should sound exactly the same as it was. So we're bringing up the, the, the level, and we're bringing it back down. We have all this headroom, so there shouldn't be any problem, but we have a problem. And anybody who's heard this before, they, they can recognize the sound of a signal that's hitting a limiter, okay? It's a sine wave that's clearly squaring off as it's hitting a limiter. So now, so what's going on? And this has been the, the source of confusion um, and, and, and some consternation, right? Because it's Pro Tools is not behaving the way that you would expect it to. And I think for a lot of people, they've assumed that there's a, a defect and it isn't. Mm-hmm. It's, it's something that was built in ostensibly to protect you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and let's take a look at what that is. So I'm going to go up to to the preferences i'm going to go into the processing tab wow we went to that tab first time (laughs) almost like i had a plan and then at the very bottom you're going to see this and i'm going to i'm going to pause this here um in the miscellaneous section down in the lower right hand section it says noise burst peak protection is designed to protect your ears from unexpected spikes in, sig- in audio signal as can be caused by a misbehaving plugin or other component in the signal chain we're not talking about something that pro tools is doing we're talking about things that can happen in the signal chain unexpectedly that can send spikes and because it's 32 bit floating point those spikes can be enormous right 1500 when decibels enabled, <laughs> right. So when enabled, signals above 20 dB FS will be silenced. And here's the only real quibble that I have. It's yeah. si- signals above 20 dB are, are not being silenced. What it is, it's a limiter mm. with a ceiling at, at 20 dB full scale. Right. And that's what you're hearing because yeah. we brought it up more than 20 dBs. And even if we brought it back down more than 20 dBs, because there was a point in that signal chain that got up above 20 dBs, that's where it's hitting. Right. Turning this preference off will allow full 32-bit floating point headroom, but will remove protection against high signal noise bursts. Do this at your own risk. I love that last one. It's like, (laughs) you're on your own. Um, But And don't take this to mean that if you turn this off, you're not operating at at 32-bit floating point. You are. You're just operating at 32-bit floating point without that limiter. It's unrestricted. It's unrestricted. It, it It is unadulterated, un unprotected 32 bit floating point. So now I'm going to go ahead here. Um, do, 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 do. Okay. So there's a little bit of dead time in this video. Professionals. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And so I click okay. Boom. I click okay in the preferences window. And now if I go back down here, having taken off that problem, I hear a sine wave the way nature intended and that's it right um stop sharing now it's the do so at your own risk thing that makes this whole scenario baffling to me (laughs) it's well because there's only two groups of people that that really know this is there this or would come up against this teachers as you said is one of them and right. people who don't manage their signals properly in the system and end up with epic amounts of signal in each of their tracks. But but, but you will need to be 
I mean, extremely car- careless yeah. to, uh, exactly. to ever okay. experience. Okay, I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw somebody <laughs> not named under the bus. But one of the videos that that kind of brought this to a larger non ACI audience was from a mastering engineer, and he goes, "Watch out for this." I'm like, "How in the world can a mastering engineer?" <laughs> Yeah. Run up into a situation where where the signals are so so out of control that they it, I I have to work as a teacher who pushes the system as a beta tester I have to work really hard to get to a point where I'm hitting those outer edges. Um, how is it that somebody who's a mastering engineer working with presumably fewer levels of tracks and also presumably with a larger understanding of of of, uh, of gain <laughs> staging how are they possibly hitting them and and he, I, he should I, I don't know he should just no be idea. just be existing between zero and minus six db true peak right <laughs> but i mean i mean uh, you would think, you think. <laughs> andy uh, i think you know the answer of, of that question right the uh, I, I, th- I think some people uh, are not out to to actually find out something or or uh, they are there's an they, agenda they are, there's an agenda yeah, mm-hmm. there's an agenda. And, uh, I, 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 I try to be more charitable. I think yeah. you know, if, if the guy, the guy asked a question, he brought up an issue. No, it now wasn't a have... question, and that's my problem. I think, uh, and uh, I mean, it wasn't a question; it was a statement, right? Mm-hmm. Don't uh, use Pro Tools. I think that's the title of the video. Be- because, <laughs> because the because the the engine is broken because the tracks are broken. It's not yeah. at all. It's I the, well, the way and, the and way now, I think about this it. is. It's like someone's put a, a, a security fence around the sun to stop people going too close to the sun, and everyone's complained about it. So they say, okay, we'll just take the security fence away. You, you know, it, it's, it's like those, you know, using, con- continuing the sun metaphor, it's like those, those glasses that they give out to kids before you look at the eclipse, yeah. right? So it's like, don't look at the sun with the eclipse, but I don't want to wear the glasses. What's, this, what's the sun trying to hide, right? Yours is funnier. We'll go with yours. <laughs> yeah, so, okay, but, uh, so are so there, are we so excited? Are we excited about this uh, new feature in, in Pro Tools? I'll, you know, you know. I will tell you this. I will turn it off when I'm showing the the 32 bit floating point. <laughs> yeah. As soon as I'm done, I'm turning that back on. Ditto. And that's it, it. It's it's enabled by default. Um, I I don't. It's good to know that there's that that twenty limit, and if I ever run into a circumstance where I ever hit that, I know about it now, right? Okay, so so that's that's a good thing. But the one thing that I don't ever want to be caught off guard, and it doesn't matter that I haven't been caught off guard up to this point. I never want it to be caught off guard. Is a spike that comes through my system and blows out my tweeters. Yep. That can't happen, and my ears, by the way. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> a secondary a secondary concern. Um, you know, it, I, that's it. I'm just not gonna. I'm not willing to play craps with that. Well, that's what it's yeah. there for, isn't it? And and you, you're only gonna hit. That's what it's there for. You're only gonna hit plus twenty dB in your tracks if you're an absolute muppet. <laughs> yeah, you have to work hard to do it, right? Which is why most people never even, unless you're an instructor, right, trying to mm-hmm. teach the concept. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, you never run yeah, up yeah. against it. But the, now, now yeah. everybody knows, and you can yeah. turn it off if you want to. Have at it, Haas. Um, <laughs> But you know, yeah, but they're when, not going the to are they? Blows, when the when when the roof blows <laughs> off your house, I don't want to hear about it. Okay, I think we've uh, just, shall we move on <laughs> because we've done yeah, what we need to on. do. We've told people what's going on. We've told people that uh, there's this this thing that was being talked about. Uh, it's it's not a bug. It's not even a feature. <laughs> it's a pro- it's a protection. It's just um, a thing a, against just a thing. An, an essentially unlimited amount of headroom within your your system that you're never going to reach you're never going to experience i i just i'm just baffled by this but but okay at least we have another checkbox to ignore there you go <laughs> another preference that can only cause misery and pain yeah uh, by the way uh, may i throw in one last comment to this please because people might be uh, thinking about a couple of things that we've been talking about and i just wanted to clarify that uh independent of what your bitrate is in your session 
all of the tracks will still have a 32-bit floating point resolution point. internally. Yeah. And that's point. really important to know that uh, even if you're on, like I only do 16-bit, don't do that, by the way. <laughs> or if you only do 24-bit, you're still having 32-bit floating point resolution at your every Unless track. Unless you're using a plugin that breaks it. Yeah. So the UED stuff, um, mm. Blue Cats, uh, Patchwork. The, yeah, they're... Mm. It's it's possible, right? But 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 largely, Andrew says one hundred percent right, zero percent wrong. Mm -hmm. Is that you know I have met so many people that are like, oh, I want to I want to mix in thirty two bit. First of all, you're not mixing in thirty two bit. You never were. You're mixing in sixty four bit. Floating right? point. Uh, floating point. Thank you. <laughs> uh, okay. Thank you. Andrew. Um, but 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 Aren't but you the glad signal flowing inside of a track is is always. <laughs> Is, is always 32-bit, whether or not you're using 16, 24-bit, or 32-bit floating point. It's honestly, I, I, I struggle to find a, a common reason why you would record at 32-bit floating point. I mean, there's some some esoteric workflows that, that I will sometimes export a clip at 32-bit floating point if it's being used in another circumstance. Mm. But I, I've never run into a situation where it's done me a damn bit of good to record it at anything other than 24 bit okay um so i will leave that there then um uh, if you've enjoyed what we were doing in in the video and got a lot out of it uh, please hit the like it really helps us um and subscribe to our channel as well that really helps us too uh if you hit the bell icon that will help you because it will notify you when our videos are released and um, you can head over to protoolsanswers.com um that will help you too because you can subs you can find out about us you can subscribe to uh, to us over there um and that will help you because andy will write to you every so often and then every month and then you can also subscribe to our Pro Tools Answers in a Circle, and that will help you and us because there are benefits for both sides. You know, you get to uh, the, to take part in masterclasses and and be brought into our Pro Tools Answers Discord community, um, and uh, the uh, small uh, monthly contribution to uh, to keeping Pro Tools Answers lights on, um, and. Uh, we uh, it helps keep the show going and stuff like that. So we really appreciate it. We love uh, meeting our uh, our subscribers and um, and supporters uh, when we uh, when we can do. And uh, have I missed anything apart from the point? I think that's it, baby. Awesome. So thank you very much to Anders. Thank you. And thank you to Andy. You bet. And my name's Dave. This is Pro Tools Answers. We'll see you next time. And we're out. <laughs>